Model steam engines, top tip time, part 28. This episode shows me making the piping to go from the T-piece, which supports the displacement lubricator, to the steam inlet on the engine. The T-piece is used to support the displacement lubricator, as can be seen here, and using my scriber, I'm pointing at the part of the T-piece that will connect to the engine. I came up with a very novel feature for this steam plant, which was surprisingly very successful. I think I will edit the next video to show what I made and how it works and how effective it was. It won't be a top tip time video, it will be a special feature. Because it's a very novel approach to a simple problem. But now here is today's top tip time video. I need to make a piece of pipe that goes between this T piece which holds the lubricator and connects at the other end to the engine steam chest inlet. Piping up a steam plant is not a difficult job, making it look good probably is. So it's a good idea to sit and look at the job before you start. Originally the pipe on this steam plant just went into the chimney, and all the water and oil residue would have just run down and messed up the inside of the boiler casing, and everything in there would have been quite messy. I'm going to try and avoid that. I'm going to put something in the chimney to collect the water so it can be piped away, so only steam comes out of the chimney not water and oil residue. I couldn't do this if this was a fire tube or a water tube boiler. This type of boiler doesn't need much of a draft up the chimney. So my idea should work okay. More about that in a future video in the series. For now it's back to the steam piping. I'll get that done first. This is a small commercial pipe bender. I have a very small commercial pipe bender that I got from a man in China. This pipe bender is slightly bigger and I bought this many years ago from Blackgates Engineering and it bends the copper pipe just how I want it bent. Sometimes on this 532nd pipe or 4mm pipe, I don't use a pipe bender, I just bend it round my thumb. This clip shows approximately what the piping is going to look like. It's not at the correct angle yet, and it's not cut to size at the other end. As you've just seen, I used a ruler to gauge where to bend the other end of the pipe. The entire pipe is quite bent at the moment, but I will straighten that out once I've finished silver soldering it. And whilst on the subject of silver soldering, here I am in the outside part of the workshop. In this clip I'm silver soldering a cone union on one end of the pipe. And because this is a tutorial, I'm going to show you one of the pitfalls of silver soldering. Applying too much flux and too much silver solder is a problem. But to be perfectly honest, I generally always apply too much silver solder. But for the tutorials I like to put more than normal on. You can see that it's a good joint though, look how it flashes around to the inside of the union cone. Once the pipe had cooled to black, I quench it in water just to descale it. And while I'm on the subject of descaling piping after you've silver soldered it, always remember that the scale that you see on the outside of the pipe will be duplicated on the inside of the pipe. That's where the acid pickle bath comes in. You can use various compounds for this, sulfuric acid, citric acid. I use Kilrock K which is a kettle descaler and it's quite mild but it gets rid of all the scale from inside the pipe as well as around the outside. Over now to my trusty Boxford lathe and I'm making a brass fitting that I will silver solder onto the end of a short piece of pipe which will serve as the water feed to the hand pump. This is a very routine job, face the end, use a centre drill and once the centre drill has just made an impression in it, use a twist drill to drill all the way through. Because this is 530 seconds of an inch pipe, it seemed like a good idea to drill it all the way through 530 seconds of an inch. This is the easiest way to feed water to a hand pump. Once it's assembled in place, I will use this to fit a piece of silicone rubber tubing on the end of it, the other end of which will go into a bottle of water. That's the hole drilled all the way through it. The next part of the job is just to clean it up first. And for this as usual, I'm using some 400 grit wet or dry sandpaper. And finally, I part off the component using a parting tool. Normally, I would put something underneath the piece of metal that's been parted off. But not this time, because I've only just cleaned out the chip tray. So when it falls into the chip tray, I'll be able to find it. Yes, I found it, took it into the outer part of the workshop and silver soldered it to a piece of pipe. And then the piece of bent pipe, as you see here, with this fitting on the end, is bolted into place on the pump. The upper pipe that's on the pump, as you can see in this clip, is the feed to the clack valve, or the check valve, 
which is a one-way valve to allow water into the boiler, but no steam and water out. Here you see the general arrangement, the pipe still needs straightening up, and the main steam pipe needs cladding using some string. The job's starting to shape up now, and it's almost time for a steam test, I look forward to that one. The purpose of this initial steam test is to find out a couple of things. One, how the casing reacts to the heat, and two, what's going to happen when I block off the chimney. Although the steam plant has a hand pump, I thought I would initially fill it using a funnel into the safety valve hole. And why am I doing it this way? Just to speed things up a bit. This is only a small boiler, and in no time at all, the sight glass was showing half full. I didn't fill the boiler right up to the top, because if I did that, then it would take a much longer time to raise steam. And with the boiler half full, I refitted the safety valve. I found it difficult to light this boiler. I have one of these special extended lighters, but it was empty. In fact, I have two of these, and they're both empty. Note to self, buy a tin of butane gas. As you can see in this clip, the burner is burning very well. The ceramic nearest the inlet isn't burning very well, but it's OK. Time to oil up the engine, ready for it to run. There's not enough pressure in the boiler yet, but we're getting there. I've fitted a piece of clear silicone rubber tubing from the exhaust outlet on the engine, and this goes into a tin. It's held in place with a plastic clamp, because I want to see how much water comes out of the engine. This would normally go up the chimney. The side of the boiler casing is blistering nicely. What you must not do under any circumstances is touch the blistering paint, either with your fingers, well that's stupid, you burn yourself, or even with a cloth. I mean now it's got really bad, and I'm very tempted to press it back into position with a cloth. But if I do that, the paint will stick to the cloth and come off the boiler and it will be a right mess. So for now, I'm more interested in how much water comes out of the engine. That's why I fitted a piece of clear silicone rubber tubing. And you can see there's quite a lot of water passing along the silicone rubber tubing. It takes very little steam pressure to make this engine go fast enough to generate some electricity. Six volts is what I'm looking for. It's time to set the safety valve. The pressure at the moment is only 30 pounds per square inch and the valve is starting to blow off. I need to run this boiler at 50 pounds per square inch. I performed a hydraulic test up to 150 pounds per square inch, so the tolerance is good. There's a groove in the top of the safety valve, and I'm moving it with a spanner. Now the safety valve is blowing off at 50 pounds per square inch, so I'm just going to leave the boiler for a while to see whether the safety valve blows off enough pressure to hold the gauge at 50 pounds per square inch. Initially, I set the valve a bit on the low side, so once again with the spanner in the groove across the top of it, I'm adjusting the position of the spring to make it blow off a bit higher. And now everything seems fine. It's been blowing off at 50 pounds per square inch for quite a while, and the boiler pressure is not gaining on the safety valve. This initial steam test has been quite successful. Yes, it's burnt the paint on the boiler, but I did expect that to be perfectly honest. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.